Hi everyone, welcome to Stogie Geek Shorts. We're going to do the Avo Nicaraguan in this episode. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian. I'm joined here in studio. I'll start for this is like an epic Stogie Geek Shorts. We've got multiple guests in studio. The lovely Brenda from next door is here. Hello. Welcome, Brenda. Jared is, uh, now we can't get rid of him. Yeah. Ed, Ed, Ed McMahon, McMahon is here. <laughs> Ed McMahon is here to stay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, On man. the lines via Skype, we've got Mr. Will Cooper. Welcome, hey, greetings, Will. Greetings, everybody. So, Will, you um, you sparked this whole thing. It's all your fault. And we we reviewed, well, we talked about this cigar probably in Stogie Geeks News, where I'm like an Avo fan, if to say it mildly. But uh, <clears throat> I was very excited when they said they were coming out with a Nicaraguan cigar. And then I smoked the Robusto, and I was kind of like, eh, I wanted something more from it. And then Will texted me over the weekend, and he was like, Paul, you got to smoke the 60 ring. And I'm like, really? The 60 ring? And uh, I started smoking it now. And it's, like you said before we started recording, Jared, I mean, it's totally different. Totally, totally different. Totally different than the Robusto. And it's got a, a weird box press. Is this the only one to have this shape, Will? No, I think, it's, I think because it's a, a bigger ring that you see, it's more of a softer press that you have on it. Except for the top, which is totally flat. The, the, yeah, the flat, it does, when I'm looking at it, you're right. It is towards the cap, very flat. Yes, very very flat along, uh, along the top of the cigar. I don't know if you can see that on this camera right here. I'll try and hold it up. Very flat, but then rounded uh, on the rest, which makes for a very interesting box press. Although the bottom's kind of flat, too. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a weird box press. But uh, like we were saying before, I like the box press yeah. on a 60. It makes them a lot more smokable, yeah. in my opinion, Will. This is a very smokable 60 ring. I don't feel like I'm smoking yeah. a 60 ring and at all. This is a tough, and, it's, and speaking to the character, the construction and stuff like that, I mean, box presses are tough to make in the first place because you have to underfill them in right. order to get that box press sharp. But to have such a sharp box press yes. which so, with such a big bunch mm -hmm. and such a delicate wrapper, I mean, this is a, it's definitely well constructed yeah. for sure. Brenda, what do you what do you get in flavor wise off of this thing? Uh, right now, well, I haven't gotten the pepper mm. that I read about. Yeah, um, you said the the description yeah, said it was it like. Yeah, it said it was supposed to start off um, a little bit of pepper before you really got into mm -hmm. settled into the cigar. Um, I'm not picking that up. I'm getting that light, almost cedary, leathery notes, um, which I'm is really nice. I'm definitely getting the cedar. Yeah, I mm -hmm. really like nice that cedar. taste. I Absolutely. get I get a little pepper on the retro hail. That's yeah. where on I on the feel retro it. you'll get it. But yeah. yeah, actually on the smaller sizes I got it, it was kind of overwhelming, but it wasn't pepper I was getting at the beginning. And Jared, you used a good term for it before it gamey almost yes <laughs> yes on the robusto I find it, ed mcmahon over there has got a lot of very interesting yeah. ways to describe flavors right you're yeah. talking about wasabi i said oh. <laughs> but that was that was a little exorbitant i said <laughs> it tasted like unsweetened granola and wasabi, wasabi. <laughs> that was that was, was not that the, the avo that, that was not, not the avo okay no. that's a different cigar no. but it was like you know when you eat wasabi it's in your nose yeah. but it's not on your mouth it's not yeah. on your tongue that kind of like dry subtle heat that mm -hmm. just you feel rather than like taste you know what i mean you know what well, though in, yeah. in in this size i'm not getting a lot of those like classic avo mm -mm. flavors i'm not getting that herbal no. or tea or hay notes that I'm you normally get with an avo i'm getting that i'm getting that nicaragua is what i'm right. getting yeah. more of what's that brenda you're not I, a big not, fan I'm of those not, i don't really like the floral stuff <laughs> yeah but uh this is actually settling really nice now it smelled very floral yeah it did it, the I'm smelled extremely up a floral. lot of that though no not in this one and, and not those, uh, you don't like that grassy hay. I don't, not really. See, I yeah. dig that profile. I do. You do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet, I did it at first, hay profile. but it, it, it grew on me. Yeah. Um, so, Will, why don't you tell us a little bit about this cigar, so I'm not staring at my, at my monitor over here. Uh, tell us about the wrapper binder filler. Sure. So, a um, little, little deceiving. It's not an all-Nicaraguan cigar. They weren't trying to recreate Davidoff Nicaragua. Um, what they do is they have a, uh, a Kinetic Ecuador wrapper, and it's, it's kind of a dark for what you would consider Connecticut Ecuador, because a lot of times um, you'll think of shade grown, or on the other hand, you could think it's light compared to a broadleaf, but it's kind of like a, a medium, I would say, um, in terms of what you're seeing on this cigar. Um, the medium brown it is. Dominican binder, and then the filler, the Nicaraguan component of the filler is from Ometepe, which your folks are familiar with Ometepe. It's that island located in Lake Nicaragua where you basically go to a hotel there. You have to have netting because the tarantulas will attack you. 
as I've been, <laughs> as, as I've been told. Very interesting. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, it's got some Dominican tobaccos, uh, some Peloto, San Vicente, and a hybrid of a uh, hybrid olor leaf in there. And then it's got some Peruvian tobacco, which the Peruvian sometimes I get that very herbal note from a Peruvian, and I'm not quite getting it with this cigar yeah. in here. This is a special Toro, which is what they're calling the 6x60 box press. <clears throat> um, and so there's three other sizes, a traditional Toro, 6x54, Robusto 5x50, and a short Robusto 4x52. I don't think I've smoked – I haven't smoked the short Robusto. No, no. but I, in terms of the, the way that this blend works, it seems like the bigger the size, the better mm. that's, for me that's, so far. So far, yeah. You know, I think if a short, uh, the Robusto had that sort of gamey character for me, yeah. I think the short Robusto would probably just magnify that yeah. if they kept the proportions of the tobaccos I, together. I want to I want to kind of just say something on that gamey thing because I thought it was a, in all seriousness, I thought it was a real interesting analogy because I, I do like game meat, but when yeah. game meat is too gamey, it just yeah. doesn't taste good, and and that's kind of what I was getting on the smaller sizes. Not that it didn't taste good, but I just felt it was a little too. Overpower, overpowering, whatever was at yeah. the That's beginning. when you do like a wasabi crust. <laughs> <laughs> and it takes yeah. down that, <laughs> that gaminess. That gaminess. Uh, so <laughs> what do you think of the, the strength profile? I think it's pretty medium bodied. I find yeah. the strength be much less than the Robusto. I think yeah, the Robusto I had totally a lot more agree. punch yeah. to it. It's, I, it's, it's strength is medium. Mm. Yeah. Brett, have you smoked the other sizes in this No, yet? I haven't smoked any of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've been finding lately, I've never been a big ring gauge smoker. I've always liked the smaller sizes mm-hmm. or Lanceros. Um, but I'm finding a lot of cigars lately, I've been enjoying them in the bigger ring gauges in the Gordos, That's the 660s. Seems to be the trend. Um, it's like the Factory 57. Mm-hmm. I didn't care for it in like the Corona Robusto size, but then I smoked it in the Gordo. Right. I really liked it. Um, not a huge Avo fan. Oh, you know, a lot of this well, stuff you, don't you like said that, is that, that florally yeah, taste, so the, I don't really yeah. go for that all the time. But I haven't picked that up in it, so you're getting that still. It's starting to settle into that creaminess. and yeah. you know. As I'm smoking it across my tongue, I'm getting real creaminess. Yeah. And then as I'm inhaling, as I'm, as I'm drawing on the cigar, I'm getting like almost like a citrusy kind of tone on the tip of my yep. tongue. Mm-hmm. Like as, are you getting that, Will? Like as Absolutely. I'm smoking it, I feel it on my tongue. Again, I'm not tasting it. I'm feeling it. Feeling yeah, it. Jared's got a great palate, so he can taste every little piece of it. Yeah, I'm impressed, yep. yeah. Edmund, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to play Ash get ball with your, <laughs> with your <laughs> shirt over there. We, we are going to do a Karnak segment on Stogie Geeks. I think I'm definitely – I'm going to plan that out, by the way. Oh, Excellent. no. Excellent. Uh, I'm in too deep. <laughs> so these just came into, uh, into the humidor oh, yeah. next door. Mm-hmm. Um, have they been selling well or people like, oh my God, Avo makes a Nicaraguan? Yeah, you know what? It was the same with like the Davidoff stuff um, when they came out with the Nicaraguan, what, mm-hmm. a couple of years ago? Yeah. On that. People were like, um, what is that? We've had, yeah, people are kind of like, they're used to the standard, you know, Dominican stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but once you get people to try it, they've really been liking it. So we've been going through a lot of the Davidoff stuff um, in the Nicaraguan. Right. Um, so now people are actually starting to take the chance on that stuff. So now that this came in being normally what Dominican, mm-hmm. um, the Nicaraguan is kind of giving people a little more feel out. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's the more they branch off and start doing different stuff. People want that, you know. Right. They stick a smoke the same old Dominican yeah, they stick. Want they diversity. want a little variety in it. They want a little complexity. What I like too, and about the size is when I smoke so-called sixty ring. Yeah. Right. I like the ones that are like a fifty-eight, not quite yeah. around sixty, and I like the sixty rings like this that are box pressed, like ones yeah. from LFD. Yep. As well, I think that makes for a, a really great smoking experience. Yeah, I think it's yeah. it just naturally fits it. It yeah. f- at the risk of ridicule, it fits in your mouth pretty well. Yeah, I think it's just got a good well, mouth no, feel. Well, no, even well, if, if you're a woman, <laughs> say you're a woman, like I'm a I'm a petite woman too. Um, you like know, Jar- it's almost like obscene. Two? Like, what do you yeah. mean too? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a petite woman. <laughs> Uh, First Ed McMahon, now I'm a petite woman. That's very um, flattering. But if we do want to smoke something um, in a bigger ring gauge, it's not mm-hmm. as obscene to smoke a box press versus, you know, a round cigar. Yeah, I just find it's, that the 60 rings just in a traditional Parejo just aren't comfortable to smoke. No. no. At, at all. No. And, and we've always said that, but the box press makes it makes it manageable. And this cigar is really good. Will, I think, yeah. I mean, I'm about to throw the way into right, it. Will. Good yeah, call. you're spot on. I mean, all three of us here are very critical uh, cigar nerds <laughs> sitting here in the studio, and uh, you've made a great recommendation. Thank you. Yeah, like I said, I, I thought I was crazy 
when I sent you that message. Yeah. But because because I you know, but this one really came through. I mean, this one really came through. Excellent. Now, do you know if they're play, uh, planning on any more sizes with this will, or any anything different in the Nicaraguan line? I don't, um, as far as sizes go. I know they're trying to be real sensitive, Davidoff, to the amount of facings that they have right now and SKUs they're offering. Um, mm-hmm. So I know they're being a little sensitive on that. I do think Synchro, <laughs> and don't quote me on it, it sounds like Synchro may become a sub-brand, though, with the, under the Avo line going forward. So we may see something else with that. I, I, believe, I believe that just the fact that, I mean, we, you haven't seen anything really new released from Avo in a little while and and being a, from a manufacturer's perspective at the trade show floor it really seemed like Davidoff is going to start an initiative much like they did with Camacho to really get behind Avo and start driving the Avo yes. brand to, yeah. to sort of re-energize that in the market and I think like you said Will I think you're spot on I think that Synchro is going to start to uh, to become their sort of rebranding very exactly what they did with Camacho. I think that Synchro is going to sort of be the theme for how they rebrand and get behind Avo in the market now. A- absolutely. I agree. That's a good point. You know, if folks uh, tune into Stogie Geeks episode 145, we had Scott Colaser, the, uh, the Avo brand manager. I encourage folks to check out that episode because he really laid out the vision for Avo very well, um, as well as gave a lot of history of the brand, too. Excellent. Well, Jared and Brenda, thank you very much uh, for coming thank on and talking about this cigar. You're welcome. This very well could become one of my most favorite 60 rings. I can, yeah. I can totally see it fitting in that, in Absolutely. that profile. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so really quick, what's your, what's your assessment, Brenda? Um, smoke it again? Smoke it again, yeah. Um, wouldn't be my everyday smoke. Yeah. Um, you know, I like the fuller stuff. Um, you know, a couple times a week. Throw it in the rotation. Right. Good, good flavor. I like the box press. Um, yeah, and uh, you can get them at Havana Cigar in all sizes. What's the price point on this? Uh, actually, this is like ten twenty five. Really? For a cigar like this? Yeah, no, you're, you're getting a <coughs> I real mean, bang it burns, for your buck. It's burning fairly fast, too, though. It, it, yeah, I was going to say that. Fast. Yeah, yeah, it's not a, it's not a slow burn. But I'm not pulling smoke. the tar like I normally do. I'm famous for that. I smoke them so fast. Too I, just fast start, yeah. I just start picking tar up throughout the whole right, thing. Right. And I've yet to get that from this, so it's Nice. Jared, strange. final thoughts? Um, I, I think... It, I liked, even though the Robusto, like I said, had some, had some quirks, I still like that smoke. Me too. I, I, I think that this is better. So if I said Robusto was a box split, I think then this has to be box worthy box. because I really, I really could see myself, if I had a long drive or if I was sitting outside and had plenty of time to myself, <clears throat> maybe with some uh, Defiant whiskey or something like that, I'd sit down and I could Yeah, I, I think could this would hold up, nice <clears throat> hold up a, for some pairings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Well, closing thoughts? Box worthy. Um, I actually had the, and, and I think Jared hit it on the head. It, the Robusto, not a bad cigar by any means. I think there was some very high expectations I had with this cigar, but you know, not every size. You're not gonna love every size in a line, and I think it was good. I kind of went to the fourth size here, and I was glad I did because this, I gave this sh- an open mind with it, and I'm really happy. It's a box worthy cigar. Yeah, you're spot on. Yep, mm-hmm. size matters is size really matter. what we're saying. Size and, matters. <laughs> Um, so you can check out the Stogie Geek Show live every Thursday evening, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time at stogiegeeks.com forward slash live. You can visit our website. Find all of the reviews, that uh, all the cigars that we review on the show, as well as our other shows like this one, Stogie Geek Short, Stogie Geeks News, as well as our daily cigar review news site, cigar-coop.com. Thanks, everyone, for watching. <laughs>